Infinity's latest crossover is a stunner, but is it the right product at the wrong time? Let's take a look. Jared here with CarBuzz.com and BMW introduced us to the idea of an SUV coupe way back in 2007 with the X6. It took Infiniti just a little while longer to catch on to this whole SUV coupe thing, but they finally made one. This is the 2022 Infiniti QX55, basically a coupe version of their compact QX50. Is an SUV coupe enough to draw people back to the Infiniti brand? Let's check it out and find out the answer. We usually start off these reviews by driving the car, but that's not where the big story is on the QX55. This car is all about the styling. As I mentioned, heavily based on the QX50, which is an attractive looking car. And I think this is also a very attractive looking car. I'm going to start by saying that right up front. Infiniti's designers have done a really good job transforming the QX50 from a conventional crossover to a crossover coupe with the QX55. The changes up front aren't that different from the average QX50. We've got a little bit of a larger grill. It's a little bit chromier than what you'd get on a QX50. We have a little bit of a different treatment here down on the lower fascia just to give the QX55 its own unique vibe. A small note on the grill here, Infinity says that it was inspired by Japanese origami. I can kind of see it. From the side profile is where we start to see some more major changes. This roof line, very different than what you'll get on a standard QX50. You might prefer the QX50 or you might prefer this more coupe-like QX55. Now this coupe version competes against a little bit of a different vehicle class. We've got the Audi Q5 Sportback, the BMW X4, and the Mercedes GLC Coupe also in this vehicle class. At a little bit smaller of a vehicle class, you also have the Volvo C40 Recharge, which is all electric. Now, I kind of wish this car was all electric, but as we're gonna see, it is not. It does look very premium, very good. I think this is one of the more attractive vehicles of that group. We've got these 20 inch wheels that give it a very nice premium appearance, but Infiniti is saying that they really hope this reminds you of their old FX. I guess in terms of styling, it does. Does, but as we'll see out on the road later, this is not really a direct successor to the old FX. The culmination of Infiniti's coupe-like design really ends back here in the rear of the vehicle. We've got these different taillights than we get from the QX50. I think these really remind me of the Q60 coupe. It is rather attractive. I'm not a big fan of SUV coupes in general, but as I've mentioned before, I think this is one of the more attractive ones. This rear end is not generally offensive like something like the BMW X4 or the Mercedes GLC Coupe. I think those are downright ugly. We saw on the exterior that the QX55 looks pretty different from a QX50, but as we get it out on the road, we're gonna discover that the two don't really drive all that differently, which shouldn't come as much surprise because they are based on the same platform after all. There is nothing new or different here underneath the skin, especially under the hood. We have the same two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine producing 268 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque. Those figures are fine for this category, but they're nothing special either. This is the same variable compression turbo technology that you get in the QX50 and actually the Nissan Altima as well. And I've criticized this engine in the past for being a little bit too complicated for its intended purpose. I just don't think that buyers really care all that much about it when I explain what it does. Basically, the engine can change its piston stroke while running to alter its compression ratio. So it can alter between a 14 to one compression ratio and an eight to one compression ratio. Why is that helpful? Well, it can run high compression for those times when you wanna get good fuel economy and it can run a lower compression ratio for those times that you want it to have more power output. Including this technology would make sense to me if it did one of two things well. One, produced incredible horsepower for its displacement, but at 268 horsepower out of a two liter, that's just fine. I was hoping it would maybe produce 300, 350, you know, some incredible number for a two liter engine. Or two, produced in impeccable fuel economy, and it doesn't really do that either. This QX55 comes with standard all-wheel drive, whereas the QX50 you can get with front-wheel drive, and it gets 22 mpg in the city and 28 mpg on the highway. That's nothing special. An Audi Q5 has a non-variable compression two liter engine, and it actually returns one better fuel economy in the city. So I really don't get what the big draw 
of this variable compression technology is because it doesn't really produce more power or better fuel economy than the average two liter four cylinder. And I haven't even gotten to the silliest part of this drivetrain yet. All of that power goes to the wheels through a continuously variable transmission. Now, I am one of the biggest defenders there is of the CVT. I think they're pretty good in the average economy car. I think they're smooth. And the average buyer who's spending $25,000, $30,000 on a compact car doesn't really care about what type of transmission it has. But in a $60,000 luxury car, it just feels a little out of place. You go to put your foot down and you just get this kind of rubber bandy acceleration. Obviously, there's no gears. The transmission does its best to kind of feign having real gears, but I don't think that that kind of type of acceleration is befitting of a car that's this expensive. Remember when I said earlier in the video that Infiniti kind of wanted you to think of the QX55 as the spiritual successor to the old FX? Well, that car had a super sweet V6 engine, or you could even get a fire-breathing V8. And based on how this drives and the drivetrain, sorry, Infiniti, I am just not drawing that comparison whatsoever. So this drivetrain doesn't impress me whatsoever, but at least the QX55 is comfortable. The ride is cushy, the cabin is remarkably quiet, we've got double thick glass here, and the performance, while not breathtaking, is at least quick enough to make you feel that the Infiniti QX55 is not a hindrance in traffic. If all you care about is having a very comfortable crossover that isn't sporty at all, the QX55 does that well. And I'll end this driving segment on a high note by talking about Infiniti's Pro Pilot Assist technology. You can get this on a variety of Nissans as well. Here's how it works. We've got this blue button here on the steering wheel. I just push it and then I set my cruise control. So now it's going to use the adaptive cruise control and the lane keeping technology to sort of steer the car for me just a little bit. I have to keep my hands on the wheel the whole time and it will do all the accelerating and all the braking. This is one of the better versions of this kind of semi-autonomous technology that I've tested. You can get this on all but the base trim of the QX55, and I think it works really well. There's only one problem with it. It's when you're driving along, it'll sometimes just beep at you, it'll go bun up to let you know that it sensed the lines. And then if you go through like an intersection, it'll go dun up to let you know that you lost it. It's infuriating when that keeps happening over and over and over. Now that we're done driving the QX55, I pulled over so that we can check out the interior. This is a perfect time to remind everybody that if you've liked this video so far, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. And if you want to read my full review on the QX55, be sure to check out carbuzz.com. So let's look at the cabin here on the QX55. Just like with the driving, there's not a whole lot changed here from the QX50. One odd omission here is we're sitting in the top center sensory trim level of the QX55. That's actually a mid trim level on the QX50. The QX50 offers an autograph trim, which is a little bit nicer than what we see here on this interior. You get these beautiful quilted semi aniline seats and you get a nicer wood finish on the dash. Not available here on the QX55. Not really sure why that is. Uh, the seats just look a little bit plain, even though we have this cool red and black two-tone finish. Just looks a little bit bland in here. We do have some nice materials here on the dash. It is all soft touch, but I gotta say, I'm a little bit more impressed with the European options like the BMW. BMW X4 and Audi Q5 Sportback. I think those cabins are just a little bit more premium inside. But the lack of an autograph trim level is not my biggest gripe here. It's this infotainment system. It's called Infinity In Touch. I think it debuted back in like 2014 in the Q50 sedan, and Infinity's actually gone and replaced this. We now have a single screen setup that you can get on the QX60. I think it's much easier to use. But the QX55, they just did not want to do any updating to the QX50's interior, so they soldiered on with this sort of out of date infotainment system with a few updates here and there. Let's talk about why I don't like this system. For starters, you have this eight inch touchscreen. The only thing that it does is pull up your navigation map. So you're just looking at this all the time. The graphics don't look great. They kind of look like they came out of a car that's 
10 years old. And what's weird is that the graphics on this screen do not match the graphics on this screen. As you can see, the icons are very different. Even the fonts are different. And just the glossiness of the screen is different. It looks like they came out of two different cars. I mentioned that there are some updates here. Infinity has now added wireless Apple CarPlay as standard. You do get Android Auto as well, but you do have to plug your phone in for that. It does look nice when you pull up Apple CarPlay, at least Apple CarPlay always looks nice, but the screen is still a lot smaller than what you'll get on something like a BMW X4 or an Audi Q5. Now you can also control this upper screen using this rotating knob. I always forget it's here because these are touch screens anyway, so I'm not sure why I'd wanna use the rotating knob, but you can also use it to control your Apple CarPlay. It's a bit weird. This screen also houses your 360 degree camera on this car, which it's nice that it has that feature, but as you can see, there are some really heavy stitch lines here and the quality of these cameras is not great, especially when you factor in this car's price. It really just makes the QX55 feel outdated when you're looking at this screen. The lower screen isn't all that much better. You can use it to enter your GPS destinations. You can use it to pull up your audio information. I guess that's kind of cool that you don't have to leave Apple CarPlay. You can control your radio functions. You also have a climate screen, although most of those climate functions are housed here anyway on these physical buttons. So I'm not really sure why you'd pull this up other than for the one or two functions like the heated steering wheel that there aren't buttons for. It's just kind of a mess and I don't love interacting with this system very much. Moving into the back seat, this is one of the areas where I start to not like SUV coupes compared to their standard counterparts. Because they have more rakish roof lines, you get less headroom. Now here on the QX55, you're gonna lose about two inches compared to the QX50. That's not great, but the QX50 does have impressive leg room. You can see I'm very far from the seat in front, which is nice, and I can also slide and recline the seat very well, so I can get into a very comfortable position here in the back seat. This is one of the best in the compact class. Wrapping up with the trunk, this is one reason why I typically do not like SUV coupes. Things like the BMW X4 and GLC Coupe have less storage space than their conventional counterparts, but since the QX55 is based on the QX50, which has some of the most storage you'll get from any compact luxury crossover, the storage space here is not bad whatsoever. We've got just under 27 cubic feet of space back here, which is much larger than an X4 or a Q5 or a GLC, and when you fold down these seats, you're going to get just over 54 cubic feet of space. The other thing that I love here is you could fold down those seats from the second row like you can a lot of, on a lot of the competitors, but we also have duplicate switches back here in the trunk that I can pull on so I don't have to go all the way up there to lower the seats. That's convenience. That was the 2022 Infiniti QX55 and now I have to answer the question of whether or not I would recommend this car and the answer is Probably not. I think it's just too expensive. This car costs $46,000. $500 for the entry level model. And this sensory trim that you see here fully loaded is over $60,000. Now you could get a lot of Audi, BMW, or Mercedes for that price. And this is roughly $4,000 more than the equivalent QX50 with all wheel drive. And I just don't think that the QX55 adds enough to that vehicle to justify that cost. <laughs>